Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Lev Vygotsky and the Sociocultural Theory. I am your narrator, Frank Avella, and in this presentation you will learn everything you ever needed to know about this topic and the zone of proximal development. Here we'll take a look at the life of Mr. Vygotsky and other related topics. All information will be brought to you in a concise and efficient manner. Now let's begin with a brief overview. Ultimately, Vygotsky believed that human development and learning is a socially mediated process. Vygotsky states that social interaction within the family and the community is the primary means by which children acquire behaviors. Children will enhance their cognitive processes relative to their own society and individuals closest to them socially. Vygotsky stands out from other prominent developmental psychologists in that he places significant importance on culture. He believed that there is a complex relationship between culture and child development. Vygotsky made it his mission to make a positive impact on child development. He was determined to analyze the effects of socialization on cognitive development. Vygotsky put forth the idea that learning occurs on two levels. First is the social level, essentially how the learner interacts with the community. Second is the individual level. Learning occurs inside the child's mind. Interpsychological and intrapsychological learning. On to the next section where we'll take a look at the life of Lev Vygotsky. The following quote is attributed to him. Today, Vygotsky is known for several impactful and powerful quotes. This is one of them. He is often called the Mozart of psychology because Vygotsky came up with several different theories in a short span of time, demonstrating his ability and creativity. He was a true master in his field, and all his work came so quickly. In 1913, Vygotsky was admitted to Moscow University through a lottery system. At the time, there, were just, there was just a 3% Jewish student quota that benefited Vygotsky. It helped him get in. He studied a number of different disciplines. Vygotsky took an interest in the humanities, social sciences, and the arts. He studied at law school for a short period of time even. Eventually made his way to psychology and education, where he found his place. Vygotsky's life was unfortunately cut short at the age of 37. At the time of his death, Vygotsky was unknown. However, shortly after his death, he was recognized as a leading expert in his field. The cause of his death was tuberculosis. Next, we'll take a look at some of the major themes of the sociocultural theory brought forth by Vygotsky. The sociocultural theory of development studies the influence that, that peers or adults and cultural beliefs have on learning in children. One of the first themes of the theory is the use of psychological tools of the mind, with language being the greatest tool as a mean for communication. These intellectual tools provide methods for problem solving that children internalize through social interaction. In schools, note taking is a culture specific tool for student learning. The Vygotsky theory is centered on the belief that social interaction is essential to learning. Society increases development by engaging children in challenging activities. He also believed that play, pretend play, leads to creative imagination. The sociocultural theory emphasized the role of culture in the development of mental abilities such as language and speech. Various cultures, in their own unique ways, help children interpret how to act in the world. Cultures attach meaning to certain objects and experiences, which children then learn from. Right now, we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this channel. Also, check the description for links to resources and a PowerPoint presentation. Now, let's get back to it, and the next section is the zone of proximal development, one of the most important components of Vygotsky's work. The zone of proximal development, ZPD, is defined as the space between what the learner is able to do without assistance and what the learner can do with assistance from an adult or more skilled peer. The ZPD can be broken down into three stages for the learner. The first represent tasks that the learner can't do, even with guidance from others. The second level is what the learner can do with assistance. And the third level is what the learner can do alone independently. Vygotsky argued that a child won't reach their max potential without the help of other adults to get them through that zone. 
the gap in learning is the zone of proximal development. For education, a child may know how to add numbers on their own. That child will be able to learn subtraction with the help of adults. Subtraction is achievable within the zone of proximal development. The adult can help them learn. Something like trigonometry for that child would be outside the zone. Even with help from an adult, that child isn't ready to learn trigonometry. The ZPD offers the best chance to acquire new skills. And it's in that second level where children learn with assistance and guidance from other adults that they also make use of the intellectual tools mentioned earlier. Continuing, we'll take a look at Vygotsky's study on private speech. Vygotsky was one of the first psychologists to stress the importance of private speech and connect it to social interaction development. Private speech develops as children turn social speech inward and functions to help children self-regulate behaviors. Children use this private talk to guide their actions, sort of talking them through tough situations. Essentially, private speech is a cognitive tool that children use to plan what to do next. Vygotsky believes this use of language is a great way to overcome obstacles and increase imagination. Researchers have noted a positive correlation between private speech in young children and achievement in given tasks. Private speech leads to increased language skills. Vygotsky believed that children that engage in private speech have greater social competence than those that do not. He also hypothesized that private speech peaks between ages 3 to 7, with some studies suggesting ages between 3 and 4, others 4 and 5. The next topic of study is the more knowledgeable other, MKO. Vygotsky's assumption was that children learn through interaction with others, adults and peers, that are highly skilled and more knowledgeable than they are socially. The more knowledgeable other is simply someone that is more skilled than another person at a particular task. For example, an adult is most likely to be more knowledgeable at reading than a young child. However, it doesn't have to be an adult that is more knowledgeable. For example, one friend might learn how to play basketball by hanging out with another friend that is good at basketball. The same goes for learning how to play video games. Next, we'll take a look at scaffolding, which makes use of the idea of the zone of proximal development. Scaffolding can be used in the classroom to help students learn and achieve independence. Teachers use instructional scaffolding as a tool for student growth. Scaffolding is widely used in education in various disciplines and grade levels. It's a wonderful academic support for students. Teachers set up problem tasks for students to solve through small, challenging, and achievable steps. The teacher may be near the learner to support them along the way. The level of support is decreased as the student succeeds. Each successive step builds confidence in the student. Eventually, the learner is able to complete the task independently without any assistance. Scaffolding must take place in the zone of proximal development. Now we're going to take a look at Vygotsky's work and compare it with Jean Piaget. Psychologists Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky both studied cognitive developmental theories used to understand learning in children. First off, Piaget is well known for his stages of development. He outlined four distinct stages whereas Vygotsky did not propose or mention anything on the stages of development. Second, Piaget basically ignores the cultural influence on children that Vygotsky so strongly expressed. Piaget had a cognitive constructivist approach, while Vygotsky had a social constructivist approach. Vygotsky focused on the more knowledgeable other, and Piaget believed children learned from peers. Lastly, Vygotsky stressed a major role on language, and Piaget provided minimal attention to language. Vygotsky argued that language played a crucial role in shaping thoughts. Continuing to the next section, which is classroom applications. The work of Vygotsky, the zone of proximal development in particular, may be applied by educators in the classroom. Cooperative learning, for example, relates to the zone of proximal development. Students rely on each other to accomplish tasks that they would not be able to do on their own. Teachers can make use of the ZPD 
to lesson plan and design activities for upcoming days. Teachers use the zone to identify activities that are challenging yet achievable. Scaffolding, as mentioned earlier, is very popular. For example, a teacher may scaffold a reading comprehension assignment by separating the paragraphs into manageable tasks so that the student only has to comprehend smaller sections. Reciprocal teaching is specifically used to improve a student's reading ability. Teachers and students collaborate together by summarizing, questioning, clarifying, and predicting from the reading text. They look to the more knowledgeable other. And now we come upon the last section of this presentation, which is the criticisms of Vygotsky's work. One of the first major criticisms of his work is the lack of experimental evidence. He relies too much on observation and not enough on hard data. Vygotsky doesn't take into account the role of cognitive development and genetics plays on the acquisition of knowledge. Today we know that some individuals have slower rates of cognitive growth due to genetic makeup. Third, critics have stated that the zone of proximal development is just too vague. It is seen as an umbrella term and may include a number of different cognitive theories by other psychologists. Lastly, and most importantly, critics have identified inconsistencies, misconceptions, and contradictions. However, it is also recognized that had Vygotsky not passed away so early, he probably would have been able to clear up these misunderstandings. So there's that in defense of Vygotsky. Anyway, right now I want to say thank you for your time. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Check the description for a PowerPoint presentation and other resources. Please like and share this video. Have a great day. Thank you.